Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful spring day in North Georgia, and I'm getting ready to hike an area that was pretty recently burned. Unfortunately, it's very smoky out here today, so it's going to be a bit of a pain to be walking around in this stuff, but we should be able to find some snakes, so let's get to it. Eraser. That was fast. <laughs> I just turned my GoPro on. All right, first snake of the day, about as fast as I've ever gotten one at this spot, just right outside the car. We have actually our first Piedmont racer of the year. Looks like this guy is not really in any hurry to run away, so not really much need to grab him. We get a good look at him just sitting right here in C2. A corn, two corns, what? That's crazy. Are you serious? Right here next to the racer, we have a corn double flip. Wish I had my hook to prop this up, but two corn snakes, literally right past the racer. I mean, we're feet away from them still. That's nuts. All right, the in shed corn is behind the tin currently. This guy might actually be in shed too. Kind of looks like he is, like he's just about to shed maybe. All right, here's a look at these two side by side in the layer before I leave them to it. But very, very quick start today with a racer and a pair of corn snakes. Like, I don't know, maybe 50 yards from the car at most. I legitimately couldn't even begin to tell you where the smoke is coming from. And honestly, it's kind of annoying because, I mean, this, this area that we're hiking today has been burned for weeks now. But there's just random smoke from somewhere else lingering over it. Honestly, it keeps the temperature cool, which is good, but it irritates my lungs, which is bad. And I'm sure it is terrible for me to be walking around when it's this smoky outside so many days. A skink. Hey, buddy. I'm put his rock pile back real quick. All right, guys, this is a common five-line skink. As you can see, there is an enlarged row of scales there at the base of the tail, which is how you differentiate the common five-line from the southeastern five-line, which is also pretty common in this similar habitat. It definitely seems like inexpectatus have more of a preference for xeric areas, whereas common five-line skinks can be found basically anywhere. But otherwise, a lot of places I get both species, and a lot of those places also have broadheads. Oh, red-bellied snake. There we go. Knew that ground bark had to have something. Well, this guy's starting to go into shed. Probably his first one of the year. So, not the best looking red belly, but another snake for the day. Whooping him back. And this nice little pile of bark on the ground. There you go. Whoa, that's a couple of wasps. <laughs> Whoa, hey. I mean, I mean, no harm. I come in peace. We good? Oh, oh, I think we're good. All right, no stings, please. Just wanna look under your ground bark. Tree bark off limits. Kind of ridiculous how quickly we got into all those snakes right out of the car and then not too much since then we've definitely seen a few things but no more big snakes since the corns i was hoping we'd see good numbers of larger snakes out basking today very nice Another red-bellied snake. Look at that one. This guy also looks like he might be in some form of in shed. We'll pick him up real quick and put his rock back. Definitely not as deep in shed if he is. A little bit prettier than the first one.
little earth snake. There's a little dude in shed. Well, these little dudes have been one of the more common snakes in the Piedmont so far this year. I'm not sure how many of them I've actually showed in videos, but we've been seeing them almost every time we go out. Oh, baby! <laughs> yeah! Whoo! <laughs> oh, it took long enough. Goodness. Such a small rock. Man, that is a beautiful, healthy snake. I mean, it's borderline fat. Look at that. It's so, so well fed. Kind of yellow for this area, too. Amazing. This guy definitely has a lot more yellow than I expect to see in this area. It's kind of neat looking though. Normally I prefer the more white ones, but the yellow look is not common this far north in Georgia. A lot of the times they're more stark white. Absolutely gorgeous. I really don't think the snake has shed yet this year. It's possible it's going into his first shed cycle, so it will get better over the next few weeks at some point, but we're probably not going to be there to see. Oh, hello, you're going to bite me? Dude, did you smell the other snake on me? <laughs> He might have smelled that red-bellied snake or something. That was a weird little bite. Definitely kind of feeding response-like. It's so cool how noticeably beefier the female Scarlet Kings are in this part of the state. And you can see she's got a short little tail. We'll put her back under a rock and maybe if we're lucky we can see two. Ring neck. We found a Scarlet King before a ring neck today. Look at that guy. Really have not been an abundance of ring necks yet this year, but I'm assuming that's gonna change any day now. Hey, it's our first road box turtle of the year. You good, dude? Looks good as far as I can tell. Just scared into his shell, maybe a little bit clipped there. Looks like he might've gotten barely hit right on the front, but he should be all right. We'll get him out of the road. You can see this guy was barely clipped. Looks like he got rolled over. Minor injuries, but should survive no issue. A rat snake. Nice. Hey, buddy, come here. Nothing else under here, is there? I don't think so. All right, big rat snake under an old truck bed. Probably the last snake of the day. Oh, hello. All right, that was cool. First snake I've ever found under this piece of cover. Just a old truck bed someone discarded on the side of the road. And sure enough, nice rat snake underneath. But I will just let him go right back where he found him. And we're probably gonna call it a day because it's starting to get toasty and I have a lot of work I need to get done so that we can get out and do this again tomorrow. So that being said, it's been a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are out today at one of our favorite local hiking areas and a pretty quick start. I actually just flipped a corn snake and a black racer under a rock together, which is very unusual. Um, not super, super unusual, but just really cool to see two big snakes sharing the same rock. And a lot of the time when we're finding multiple snakes under a rock together, there are things like ring necks. But to flip a rock and just see a three-foot corn and a fully grown black racer is kind of kind of surprising, especially after a very cold overnight like we had last night. So I'm actually out here with my buddy Giff Beaton, who is mostly a bug guy. And he's excited to see some snakes, and I'm excited to see some bugs. So hopefully we'll come across some interesting invertebrates today, and he can teach us a thing or two. Because as you guys know, I am far from an invert guy. As much as I love them and as much interest as I have in them, I don't know much about them. So I'm definitely expecting to learn a thing or two out here today and hopefully see a few snakes along the way. But quick start with a nice corn snake and black racer, which I was unable to grab. If we continue to get into snakes, I might run the GoPro. But one notable thing about this guy is just how dark he is. He's almost solid brown. Most of that is due to him being deep in shed. All right, we're going to put corn snake back under his rock and continue on. There we go, first local corn of the year, and might be the only one. They're not very common here. So Giff and I are out here looking for a rare jumping spider today, and this is the only spider we've seen so far, the stone spider, 
<laughs> what was the Latin name on that again? Pardosa lapidicina. Pardosa lapidicina. And this one's got an egg sac. Is that the correct terminology? There's another one right there. Yes, it is. Yeah, I see so, it. Very common out here, but not what we're looking for. All right, we've got a, a nice tadpole congregation in this pool. These are almost certainly American toad. And it looks like these guys are feasting on what appears to be a turd. We have seen them in here eating a number of things like worms and other dead tadpoles. But these guys have chosen the fecal route, it looks like. And uh, that appears to be the only amphibian in this pond right now. I've never really seen much in this one compared to some of the other ones. Seems to be mostly, there is a, a dense congregation of toad tadpoles in here right now, though. Look at that. The bottom of the pond is toad. I think we finally have our spider. Gif's going to try to coax her out of her spot here. I can see how, so, is that, oh yeah. That is her abdomen right there. It's very dark, you were right. There oh, there we go. So can you tell us a little bit about what the spider is and why we're why it's so important, why we're out here looking for it today? So this is Habernata sabulosus. It is a kind of a locally rare spider. It appears to only occur on granite outcrops primarily in Georgia, just barely gets into South Carolina, barely gets in Alabama. There's a few outcrops in extreme northwestern North Carolina that likely have this, but we have not found it there yet. And this is a spider that was discovered in South Georgia in 1902. So that's her right there. That's yeah. a much better look. Um, and if I'm going to try to turn this around, she might not let us. I want you to see her face has a like a white little pattern. Now she's active now. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very yeah. distinct little pattern. And uh, they were discovered in 1902 and never seen again until 2004 when... There's some, a little widow under there too. Yep. When some people were out looking... Uh, for other stuff and just kind of discovered them and didn't know what they were and had them identified. So that's Habernata sabulosus, a big female. Well, there we go. That's what there we came out here that's for. That's right. And we nice. saw a couple of other things. That's the right. Line. Good job. All right, here's this little lady on my hand for size reference. Very small, and this is as big as they get, right, Gif? That's correct. So that's fully grown, as big as they get. So, so cool.